again and we can accomplish this just like we normally did. So let's try to simplify it. Do you see any numbers that can simplify, ladies and gentlemen? Four, four, eight. Four, eight. Great. We'll cross the four <coughs> out and put what? One. And the eight out and the two. Good, because four divides both those numbers. And we'll keep on going. What are we going to have here? Six over one. Okay, six. Good. So we're going to get just a six. Six over one, we're just going to write six on that. Let's try it. One more together. I'll give you a couple do on your own, and we'll move on. <coughs> Okay, 5 sixteenths divided by 3 fourths. Why don't you tell me the first thing I'm going to do? Turn into one. Oh, turn into multiplication. Good. Now, there's one thing I do want to show you here. Uh, the reason why, one of the reasons, uh, among the several, that I have you write things as one fraction before you simplify. Take a look at this real quick, please. The one, one reason why I have you do this before you simplify is if I let people cross out the 8 and the 4 right now, <coughs> When they get down to division, a lot of times people make the mistake and do this. I'm going to change the problem just briefly for a second, okay? Let's say that this was something like 12. Let's say that was 12. Could I cross the 12 out with the 16? Yeah. No. That's the reason why I have you do this, is because you cannot do that. Okay, you can't do that on division. You can't go ahead and just go, oh, yay. Four goes into this three times, four goes into this four times. It doesn't happen. Why? Because look what you're going to do. You're actually going to flip this thing over, right? That 12 is no longer on the numerator anymore. Now it's on the denominator. And then you cannot cross those numbers out. Raise your hand if you saw that. You understood that. Okay, so we can't cross out unless we make one fraction. We can't make one fraction unless we're multiplying. So can you simplify directly from division? Shake no. your head and go no. Can you simplify directly from division? No. Absolutely not. No. Just multiplication. That's why I have you do one fraction. Is it starting to make sense now why I have you do that? Okay, that way, because I'm saving you from making a mistake here. Okay, let me rewrite. What did I give you? Five sixteenths divided by three quarters. Good. <coughs> so the very first thing, before any simplification, before any of that, the only thing that we, what now? Yeah, the only thing that we can do here is do our multiplication. So we're going to leave our five sixteenths alone. That doesn't ever reciprocate. We're only looking at the second fraction. We'll flip our second fraction and do four-thirds. And by reciprocating a fraction, we're changing our division into multiplication. Now's the point where we make one fraction. Now's the point where we get to simplify. We'll have our 5 times 4. We'll have our 16 times 3. You can just extend the line if you'd like. That's fine. Just make sure you're only doing that with multiplication. And now we get to simplify. What do we simplify here? Good. On the top, we get a 1. Bottom, we get a 4. Is there anything else, ladies and gentlemen? No. So I'm going to have 5 times 1. I'm going to have 4 times 3. You can't simplify that. You're done. Why don't you try a couple on your own? Okay, first one. So we know that division, same thing as multiplication by the reciprocal. So the first thing I'm hoping that you did, do you flip the eight sevenths? No. 
Do you reciprocate the two nights? Yes. yes. And instead of division, now we have multiplication. We'll extend our line, or you'll rewrite the fraction as 8 times 9 over 7 times 2. We'll try to simplify what we can. Do you see anything? 2 goes into 2 one time, into 8 four times, so our nine. answer, we should have 36 over 7. Do I need to simplify it anymore? No, no. Okay. no that is actually simplified. If I asked for a mixed number, I'd be asking for a mixed number, which isn't the same thing. So simplification, that's done. That's good. If I asked for a mixed number, then you'd go ahead and write 5 and 1 7. Okay? You could do that, that's fine, but unless I specifically ask for it, or the problem gives it to you as a mixed number, you don't have to do that. Okay, next up, last one. First question I have for you. Is it okay to simplify the 2 with the 4 right here? Yeah. Is that ever okay with division? Yeah. No, no, we can't. The only time we can do that is if we can make one fraction out of it, and that only happens with multiplication. So here we'll flip our second fraction. We get 4 ninths. We'll get 2 over 1. Actually, nothing even simplifies there. We're just going to get 8 ninths, and we're done. As good as we can do. How many people feel pretty good about these two examples? All right. Hey, what do you think our answer is going to be? Positive or negative? What do you negative. think? Negative. Why negative? Yeah, you're dividing. That's right. Same rules as multiplication. So if we have those different signs, we're going to get a negative out of this. And that's really the, the key to doing multiplication and division, is figuring out, of fractions at least, is figuring out the sign of this fraction before we even start. So right now, I know for sure that my, my answer is going to end up being negative. And we're going to see that because division changes into multiplication, we're still going to have a negative times a positive. That's going to give us a negative. So in the first part of this, we'll leave our first fraction alone. We'll multiply <coughs> by the reciprocal of our second fraction. We know that a negative times a positive is a negative. That means we're going to have a negative 10 times 9 over 4 times 2. Are you still with me? Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to simplify. What can we simplify? 10 and 2. 10 and 2. Okay. 10 and 2. This, those share a factor of 2. So we'll divide both of them by 2. 2 divided by 2 gives us how much? 1. 10 divided by 2 gives us? Five. What's our answer going to be? 45 fourths. 45 fourths? Negative 45 fourths. Negative 45 fourths. OK, that works. I want you to notice one more thing about this problem. Do you see the first two fractions that we had on the board? <laughs> the negative 10 fourths? Can you reduce negative 10 fourths? No. Yes. Yeah, you actually could, right? Yeah. Ten fourths is the same thing as five halves. You can always simplify your fraction before you even begin. If you were to do this problem, you actually wouldn't have any simplification here. I want you to see that you get the same thing. I'll do this once. You don't have to write it down unless you really want to, but check it out. Negative ten fourths, if you divide both by two, you're going to get negative five halves. You can do the same thing we, we've been doing, right? Divide both by two. You get negative five halves times... 9 halves, you're going to get 45 fourths, negative 45 fourths, same exact thing. So if you want to save yourself some time occasionally, see if you can simplify your fractions before you even start. Nod your head, you're still okay on that. Okay, we'll do one more with just some numbers. We'll throw some variables up there, and then we'll do some evaluation. Let's do this thing. So negative 7 twelfths. Divided by negative 5 sixths. Ladies and gentlemen, our answer is going to be positive or negative. What do you think? Positive. For sure. Negative divided by negative is for sure positive. So you know what we can do now that we've determined it's going to be a positive? We don't have to write any signs anymore. We know for sure that this thing is going to be the same as 7 fourths times 6 fifths. 
Where are the negatives go? Away. Why? Because the negative times the negative. Makes yeah, you know it's going to be positive, so we're, we're good. We know our answer should be positive. We've already reciprocated. We flipped over that second fraction. We're going to extend our line. We're going to put the dots, signifying that we're multiplying. We can do that because we're multiplying two fractions. What simplifies here, ladies and gentlemen? What goes into both those numbers? So our answer? And it's positive. Exactly right. Can we do the same thing if we have some variables? We're going to take a look at that right now. y over 4 divided by 5y cubed. I think, wait a second, we don't even have a fraction. Oh, there is. So I can change anything into a fraction if I want to. So if I have 5y over 3, or if I, sorry, 5y to the third, we'll just put this over 1 and get yourself a built in fraction. <coughs> Tell me my next step, someone on the left hand side of the room. What are we going to do? Okay. Reciprocal, the first, second, or both? Thank you. So I'll take my 3y over 4. The reciprocal, what's the, what's the reciprocal of 5y cubed? What's that reciprocal? 5y cubed. Okay. Yeah, we're for sure multiplying. And now we're ready to write this thing as one fraction since we're multiplying. We just write the numerators on one numerator. We write the denominators on one denominator. And we look to see if we can simplify this. Do you see any common factors on the top and the bottom? Y's. The y's, that's right. And I showed you a method to do this. If you're, if you're good at the, the exponents, thinking about y over y to the third and understanding that this is really y to the first power right there, and we're taking one of those away from these three y's, there's going to be two of them left. Are you with me on that one? Yeah, yeah. Two of them left. Or, if that doesn't really flow with you, think about it three times y times one. Think about it as four times five times y to the third means y times y times y. That's y to the third. How many y's can I cross out? And then you're still going to get three. Here you're going to get your 20. And here you have what's left? Yeah. You get the 20 y squared. Folks, would you raise your hand if that one made sense to you? Who are right. All right. Try one of these things on your own. Let's do 2x over 3. Divided by 3x squared. 